Hi, welcome back. This is still going to be review number two for our Math 3 EOC review, um, but this is going to be parts three and four dealing with unit circle and trigonometric functions. So let's see what that's all about. Um, so we're going to be dealing with radians versus degrees, kind of seeing how to convert those. We're going to look at the unit circle. Um, this is just the first quadrant of the unit circle. So I will, I'll show you a whole unit circle and show you a couple techniques on to get the stuff in the unit circle. But if you're really interested in a deep dive, uh, there are videos out there going over how to get all the coordinates, angles, and radians for the unit circle um, that I'm not going to have time for in this video because I'm going to try to keep these short. Um, so one thing I'm going to say real quick here is if I'm converting from a, uh, a degree to a radian or a radian degree, I'm going to take my, um, my radian or my degree measure And I'm going to multiply it by pi over 180 to get a radian. And if I want to get a degree, I'm going to take my radian measure. And I'm going to multiply it by 180 over pi um, to get a degree. So uh, those will help us out. Uh, remember that in a unit circle, uh, this is going to be uh, 0 degrees. The bigger angles, they go up by 30. The smaller angles go up by 15. So this is going to be 30. Is going to be 15. 30 plus 15 is 45. And then another 15 to get to 60. And then finally another 30 to get to 90. Um, this is going to be that first coordinate is going to be 1, 0, because the radius of the unit circle is 1. Um, square root of 3 over 2, comma 1 half. Uh, square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. Um, 1 half, square root of 3 over 2. So those just switch places. And then finally, 0, 1. And all the other ones are uh, symmetric over those. So if you if you kind of follow the uh, um, the patterns of them, you should be able to get the other ones as well. Now, I want to show you something here. I got a completely filled out unit circle. And you can, you can pause this and, and memorize this if you want. Um, but just a couple things that I, I should point out that might help you, OK? So you can use your Desmos or this one, but um, I want to show you that you can get all of the coordinates by if your if your mode is set to let's say degree. So you can go down here and get it over degree. If you know how to get all the the degrees, okay. So if I want to know this coordinate here, um, all of the um, the x values are going to be cosine. So if I do cosine of 150, for example that's going to be negative 0 0.866. Now, if you look at this, fr this fraction right here, negative the square root of 3 divided by 2 is that same number. And if I do sine of 150, that's the y value. That's 0 0.5. That's 1 half. So you can actually get those coordinates from the cosine and the sine. Um, also, to get the, the radian, if you want to convert to a radian, you could just say, uh, 150, um, you just divide by 180, leave the pi out, hit math, enter, enter, and then you would say that's 5 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6. So that's how you can get those radians um, and coordinates from the unit circle if you don't have it memorized, as long as you can get the, the angles and degrees. So uh, let's get into the problems. Part 3, number 1. Uh, express 7 pi over 6 in degrees. So what we want to do is we want to take that, uh, that that's a radian. We want to take that radian and we want to multiply it by 180 over pi. So we do 7 pi over 6 multiplied by 180 over pi. And you can do that using a calculator by hand, ho however you get it. Um, I would suggest you try it first before you see my answer. So 7 pi divided by 6 multiplied by 180 divided by pi. You can use Desmos as well. And that's 210 degrees. So your answer is going to be 210. That's all there is to that. All right, next question. Um, now, this one is a lot, OK? It says, William put the tip of his pencil on the outer edge of a graph of the unit circle at point 0, negative 1. 
he moved his pencil tip through an angle of 4 pi over 3 radians in the counterclockwise direction along the edge of the circle. At what angle of the unit circle did William's pencil stop? So first thing is we got to know where 0, negative 1 is. Um, now, I have my unit circle pulled up here for your reference. And 0, negative 1 here is at 270 degrees. So if I think of where 270 is, that's going to be down here at the y-axis, where the y-axis meets down here at the bottom of the circle. And that's going to be 270 degrees. Now, I want to move 4 pi over 3 radians counterclockwise. That's going to be um, that way. Counterclockwise is that way, CCW. So I want to take my 270. I want to go this way. But 4 pi over 3 radians doesn't really resonate with me. I want to know what that is as a, as a degree. So I'm going to take that 4 pi over 3. And I'm going to times that by 180 over pi. And throw that in your calculator, see what you get. Well, that gives me 240 degrees. Um, so as a degree, that's a little bit easier to work with, you know, in terms of, of moving around. Um, but I know that's 240 degrees. So I want to take that and I want to go 240 degrees in that direction, right? So if I think about where I am, um, you know, think about increments of 90, right? This is 90 degrees. Um, this right here is another 90. So that's going to be 180. Um, if I go a third 90, that's 270. Now that's too far, right? 270 is too far. So 240, we got to back up a little bit. 240 would be somewhere like right here, right? Um, so 240 is from there to there to there. Now where the heck is that? Well, I can I can do the following. I can actually say 270 as my starting point, and I can just add 240. But that's going to give me a little bit. Um, too big of a number. Um, if I add those together, I'm going to get, let's see, 711, 510. And that's not on the unit circle. So I'm going to take 360 away from that. And that's going to give me 150 degrees. So I know that that angle right there is 150 degrees, 150 degrees. Now I need to get that in terms of a radian, so a pi. So I'm going to take that 150. And I'm going to multiply that by pi over 180. But since this is in terms of pi, in my calculator, I'm just going to do 150 over 180 and hit math, enter, enter, and convert that to a fraction. So let's do that. That gives me 5, 6. So my radian measure is actually going to be 5, 6 pi or 5 pi over 6. 5 pi over 6 radians. Um, I want to point out this diagram right over here. Let me clear all this out for a minute. So you can see that, you know, if you just kind of look at if you if you know the unit circle and if you know four pi over three, you know, it tells you right here that's 240 degrees. So if I'm starting at 270 and I go 240 degrees, there's 180. This is counterclockwise. And I'm going to have to go 60 more degrees. So um, that's going to be 20 or excuse me, 30 plus another 30 right here. So that's going to be 150 degrees, and 5 pi over 6 does land right over there. So I know that I got my answer right because I, I have my unit circle right here. Um, so definitely useful to have your unit circle kind of somewhat known so you can get that answer pretty quickly. All right, let's look at the next question. All right, part 3, number 3, what's the value of sine of pi over 3? Oh, pi over 3 is a radian. Um, so when you go to Desmos on the NC test, the default mode is actually in degrees. Let me move my face out of there. Um, so you can actually click on radians if you want. And you can type in, what is a sign? So you can type in S-I-N, parentheses, P-I divided by 3. And that actually will give you the decimal equivalent of your answer. Now, 
I got a couple of answers over here. I, I know it's not one or one half, but if you uh, put in the square root of three divided by two, that's your answer right there. Whereas the square root of two divided by two um, is a little bit short. So I know that my answer just from the calculator is gonna be square root of three over two. Um, now, if you know your unit circle, um, the sign is always going to be the, um, the y value. So if I know that the sine is the y, the cosine is the x value, and the sine is going to be the y value in the unit circle. So if I know my unit circle, and I know where pi over 3 is, and I pull that over here, pi over 3, that's at 60 degrees. And the y value at 60 degrees happens to be the square root of 3 over 2. So again, knowing your unit circle can help you get a question like that correct. All right, let's continue the video. Now we're gonna be talking about trigonometric functions. Um, same video, so this would be part four. Um, we're gonna be dealing with the sine and cosine functions. Um, sometimes they're, so, they're called sinusoidal functions, but they're always gonna have this following format, um, a sine bx plus c or a cosine bx plus c, where the, the positive value, the absolute value of that a is the amplitude. That's this vertical distance between the middle and the max or the middle and the minimum. It's, a, it's always a positive number. Um, the, the number at the end, it's actually y equals that number. That's the equation of the midline. It's always the middle number there. It could be negative. Um, and the amplitude, oh, we already talked about the amplitude. Um, the period is the distance between one full cycle. So in a cosine, it's going to start at the max and end at the max, or if it's flipped, end at the min. Um, for a sine, a sine will start um, at the midline. So it might go like this, and then end at the midline where it hits it the third time there. So that would be one period of a sine. And um, the formula to get the b value is simply going to be 2 pi divided by the period. Or if you have the period, you're going to take 2 pi and divide it by the b value um, to get the period. So let's get started. All of these, if you're going to graph on Desmos, you're going to want to be in radian mode. So I forgot to mention that, but make sure you're in radian when you're graphing. Uh, the question says, what's the amplitude of the following function? Well, I know that if I look at that number, negative four, that's your A value. And so the amplitude is always going to be the absolute value of a. So the absolute value of negative 4 is simply going to be positive 4. So amplitudes are always positive. So it's going to be 4. Now, if you want to see that as a graphing problem, um, put that in your Desmos graph. Just make sure you select radians when you're graphing. And when you put that in, uh, negative 4 sine 2x plus 3. So y equals negative 4 sin 2x plus 3. Um, I can see that it's kind of hard to tell. But if you graph your midline, y equals 3, you can go from there, that y value being 3, to the max value of 7. And you can see that vertical distance is 4. I could also go to negative one. That vertical distance from three to negative one is also four. So that is my amplitude, four units. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a positive number. Four is your answer. Next question. Uh, what is the period of a sinusoidal function with the equation y equals three cosine one half x? Uh, so the period formula is going to be two pi over b. You're going to find b in here. It's always going to be the number kind of attached to x here. So the period is going to be 2 pi over b, 2 pi over 1 half. And 2 pi over 1 half is the same as 2 pi times 2 over 1. You can keep change flip. So that's going to be 4 pi. So that'll be your period if you're doing it by hand. Uh, with calculator, you can. Just leave the pi out of your calculations. Um, if you do 2 divided by 1 half, I'll put the 1 half in parentheses. And there's your 4. So just put the pi afterward. Or you can graph the thing. 
3 cosine 1 half x. And for a cosine function, you get kind of lucky because the cosine starts here at the y-axis. So if you go over to the next peak, 4 pi is going to be your period. So you can get it that way, too. All right, next question. I believe that's our last one. Yep. So one more question, and then we'll deal with function transformations in the last video for this review. All right, this question here also can be graphed. Um, I'll show you how to do it by hand first. So the maximum value of this function, way to get your maximum value is just take your midline and add your amplitude. Now your midline is negative two and your amplitude is five. So I can just literally take negative two plus five and that'll give me three and that's gonna be my max. Um, if you graph it, just make sure you're in radian mode, radian, um, throw it in there, click on the top. That Y value is your maximum value, three. Minimum would be negative seven. So three is your answer. That concludes this video. Finally, our last set of videos are going to be dealing with all the functions and the algebra involved. We are done with the geometry for our part. Uh, so our next video is going to be dealing with functions, transformations, but it's still in this review number two. So stay tuned. One more to go on this one. Thanks for watching.